Hello everyone, welcome back to AAAS Publishing. On this series on the Astrophysical Journal, the APJ, APJ. This will be part two. In part one, we covered an abbreviated history of the APJ from volume one to volume 797, the ending of the physical printing of paper articles. And in this one today, I want to cover, uh, bring that up from 2014, late 2014, uh, up through the modern epoch, and we'll cover a little statistics on APJ publications and AAS publications in general. So APJ in the current epoch. Uh, so picking up uh, from t late 2014, in 2015, uh, the APJ and the AJ are combined under one editor-in-chief. We talked a little bit about this motion in a video series on the AJ, the Astronomical Journal. So if you're interested in a little more detail on that one, check that out. Uh, 2015 is when we begin the topic corridors. And those seven corridors are A, on my shirt, <laughs> and B, it's on the right-hand side of the video there, the um, icons and the topic names of those seven corridors. 2015, uh, we see that the beginning of AAS Nova, and so Susanna Kohler becomes uh, Nova editor, and the first highlight is published in 2015. In 2016 is when the software policy comes in. Thumbs up for me, that's totally biased, of course. Um, the citing of software instruments that enable the science. Uh, and we've covered that a little bit in a video series on publishing in the AAS journals as an author, and also as the second one on publishing in the AAS journals serving as a referee. Uh, and I may even do a, a full video on, on that one as a software policy. In 2017 is when the gold open access option begins. So the uh, AAS journals are generally considered green access in that um, uh, the page charges cover the article and then one year after publication it is open to the public and we covered a little bit about this in a video series on uh, the business model of the AAS and so the gold open access for a little bit of a premium on the page charges uh, around 40% uh, it becomes open to the public immediately. And so this option began in 2017. 2017 also saw the beginning of uh, research notes of the AAS or a reboot of the AAS research notes after a 50 year hiatus um, coming in. We also did a video series on that one. Uh, so you may want to check out that video on the research notes of the AAS. 2018, uh, we saw a change from um, the old keyword system to now the modern unified astronomy thesaurus. Uh, and so we also did a video on that one. You should check that out. Uh, and if you're submitting papers, you will, of course, run into that uh, as we transition, have transitioned uh, from the old keywords to the new UAT. Uh, and just for reference, the median charge in a AAS journal um, in 2018 was roughly about $900 or so <clears throat> for a typical sized article, etc. 2019, uh, interesting year, is when the bulletin of the AAS was rebooted. Um, we did a video series on that one with publishing of papers that were going into the decadal survey. AAS YouTube sort of gets uh, a revision or a reboot. Um, here we are. <laughs> 2019 also was really interesting. We got uh, the AAS acquired Sky and Telescope. Uh, and so that one's worth a video series coming up. And in 2019, toward the end of this year, we're going to see the first volume of the Planetary Science Journal uh, in the beginning of that, and that one will be worth a video series as well. So that brings us up to the current epoch, 2019. So I want to take a look a little bit about uh, how many papers are published in the AAS journals. So this plot here, it's a log plot on the left axis, uh, going from about 100 to 10,000. And this will cover about the last, um, on about 20 years or so. Uh, so you can see the total there at top, and then I put the total number of, of uh, the publications for the last year, to that complete year, 2018. 
there on the right. So, uh, you know, we're publishing around 4,600 um, articles per year. The APJ has the lion's share of that, publishing about 3,000 uh, a year. And you can see a slow, well, at least on a log plot, <laughs> a definite steady increase uh, in the number of articles and the number of pages that are published. Uh, then below the APJ, we have letters. Um, uh, going across there, there, that downward trend in the number of articles is somewhat on purpose. That's not through lack of caring. The entire point there is to increase the um, publication metrics of APJ letters. Uh, driving up the impact factor in particular of letters. And uh, we did a video series on APJ letters and uh, what that changes in that impact being the primary metric for uh, a primary metric for publication in APJ letters. So that downward trend is, is a little bit on purpose, decreasing the denominator uh, to drive up the H factor. Uh, we also talked about AJ in a previous video series, so that downward trend up to about 2014 was not intentional. <laughs> uh, just people were preferring to publish in the APJ as opposed to AJ. So with the advent of corridors, we covered this in AJ, there's been a definite increase in AJ uh, in 2019, which should be a banner year for AJ in terms of total number of papers uh, published, so that's, that's great. AJ is on the way up. APJS has always been relatively small, but again, uh, in terms of number of publications, around 200 or so odd a year in 2018. But again, there's, with a bit of noise, uh, even on a log plot, uh, the number of publications has been going up. Research notes started in 2017, had about 50 odd in that first year, partial year of 2017. 2018 was the first full year, uh, and it had about 239 odd um, research notes about on par with supplements as far as number of articles published. So that's some of the shorter history on the total number of papers. Uh, and one demographic that is interesting, I find, uh, is the percentage of papers that are published by single authors. So this plot is for the APJ only, the topic of this video. Uh, so in up until about 1970, most papers were single author papers. Uh, it, was, it was the duets and larger that were rare. And of course that trend has completely flipped uh, over the intervening time until the number of single author papers in the current epoch uh, is measured in the low single digits. The solo author paper is a rarity uh, relative to uh, the others. And there's lots of probable reasons for that funding reasons, sociological reasons, big science reasons, etc. why this uh, very significant trend toward multi-author papers has been taking place. And so that'll bring us to the current scope of the APJ, the Astrophysical Journal. It is devoted to recent developments, discoveries, and theories in astronomy and astrophysics. APJ publications constitute significant new research. How many times have we covered that in... in uh, these video series since I've started doing them, right? It's the primary metric, significant new research. That is directly relevant to astrophysical applications. That's true too. Uh, whether based on observational results or theoretical insights or modeling, all fair game. Significant new results is the metric applied directly to astrophysical systems. APJ publishes articles that make use of extensive observational data uh, if the data are subject to astrophysical interpretations. And that is the current scope statement of the Astrophysical Journal in 2019. And with that, I want to thank you very much for taking um, the time to listen to this. And we'll see you on the next video series. Bye-bye.